Welcome to this edition of the Forum. I'm your host, Sheila Evans. On our program today, we have three exciting and interesting interviews. Just listen to our lineup. First, we're joined by high school student Colette Penegg, who has undertaken the daunting task of writing a novel for her graduation project. She'll share her inspirations and tricks for staying motivated as her deadline approaches. Then the Cape Fear Museum has a new director, Cheryl Mays. She's got an exciting vision for the future of the museum, plus details on a whole host of upcoming exhibits. And finally, from New Hanover High School, we welcome two students, Elizabeth Pescarello and Gavin Campbell, who are part of a brand new course called Honor Service Learning. They'll tell us how this course works and the impact that it has already had on their lives. We've got three extremely interesting and informative interviews on this edition of the forum, so stick around and we'll be right back with our first guest after this short break. This financial advisor is being accused of committing one of the largest investment frauds in the history of the United States. I guess we're not going to Aspen. That's fine. You see, I like tennis balls. He likes insider trading. So he's going to jail and I'm going to a shelter. And no, they're not the same thing. Shelters are for good pets that want to be adopted. Jails are for criminals. I've done nothing. Uh-oh. Okay, I stole a cheeseburger once on my dog. Are you? Hey, Mom. You know, girls, I used to cheer back in my day. Ready? Okay. was amazing, amazing, amazing. Mom, that was amazing. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of siblings in foster care who'll take you just as you are. I have New Hanover High School senior Colette Penegg as my next guest. She is working on her graduation project and she is writing a novel. Colette, why do you want to write a book? Um, well, it kind of started in middle school uh, my grandma sent me an email because I was complaining that I was bored and she gave me a list of all the stuff to do and one of them was writing so I tried it out and I guess now I'm gonna write a book and did you begin writing because of your grandmother uh, yes and then you know middle school is kinda that, that time so whenever I was like upset about something or someone I kinda base the characters off of that and then make some random plot and, really yeah. hmm. <laughs> I like that um, what's the title of your book? How did you come up with it? I'm thinking something along the lines of revenge. I'm not 100% sure, like my revenge, the revenge, just revenge. I'm not sure. Hopefully it'll come to me when I finish it. There you go. Um, why that title? What, what's, what's the topic of the book? The book is about um, a freshman in college okay. and her brother gets shot and then so he dies and the case is between the military and the local police because he was a navy seal and after a while she gets frustrated so she decides to go after the person herself oh yeah because they're really close okay yeah and how long is this book is well, it finished no it's not okay. finished yet so it's still a work in progress yes. um how'd you come up with the plot and the characters i came up with the characters it's kind of a not a book, but I kind of started it as a short story, I suppose, in middle school. Mm -hmm. um, so the main guy character was uh, one of my friends, and I kind of, I really don't remember how I got that plot, um, but the characters now are based off of my friends here. Gotcha. So is the brother older or younger than the woman who's pursuing this? The brother's older. Older. Mm -hmm. Okay, and she's a freshman in college. Yeah. This injustice happens, and what happens in the book? Well, how does she start to take all this on? She, well, okay, so in the past, her dad ended up dying okay. uh, in like a car accident. And so her relationship with her mother was kind of tense after that, and she only had her brother. And once he passed away, she got, you know, really upset. And then with this fighting, she just got aggravated, and her personality is just do it herself. So she goes and she finds out who killed her brother and it ended up being his best friend but then there's a whole entire thing behind that as to why he did it and how that so happened. was it friendly fire or totally unrelated to him being a seal or uh, was that yeah, a surprise totally or something yeah that was just okay. um yeah it had nothing to do with him being a seal okay yeah so obviously your physical product is the finished book yes 
you have to spend 16 hours or something writing it? Um, I've already got, I think, 10 or 15 hours, and I'm only a fifth of the way done with the book. But It'll be 15 exciting hours to have is such like a the... great you know, physical product. Who's your mentor? Uh, my mentor is Bonnie Exton. And has she published or? Uh, she wrote um, a lot for the newspaper, I believe, and I haven't talked to her too much about that, but okay. she's going to go over my book when I'm finished. Do you have authors that inspire you? Um, I really like Meg Cabot. I'm not sure if I pronounced her name right. Okay. And Allie Carter. And do they keep you motivated to writing more than it being a personal thing? Um, not really, I guess. Okay. I just, I've always liked reading. Read those. So. so do you still put your thoughts on paper when you're frustrated or annoyed with somebody or that kind um, of thing? I attempted to do it once last year, but then it was just kind of weird and I couldn't do it. Um, so I'm glad I, and I, didn't, I don't really have time anymore, so I'm glad like this kind of makes me write more. So you feel like putting it down on paper in frustration was a middle school thing? Yeah. And now you kind of, well, it was a good start. Yeah, I still like base the characters off of personalities or physical traits of the people around me. I was amazed that I had a high school student I was doing an appointment with, and uh, he said one of his strategies for anger was writing poetry, and I found mm -hmm. that fascinating because I was like, <laughs> I'd be like sitting yeah. there, you know, not so angry at the paper. It. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else keeps you busy? Oh, well, I try and exercise in my free time. I run and I bike, and in the summer I'll swim. Very good. Yeah. What do your parents think about you taking this on? Um, I'm not quite sure. I don't know what they think about it. They own a restaurant, so it has nothing to do with them at all, I guess. Did anyone say, are you crazy? Yes. Knowing that the physical <laughs> product, you're only a fifth of the way through, and you've almost completed all your mm -hmm. hours? It started... Um, I was just going to make it a short story, and then my friends were like, no, you should get it published, you get it published, and I was like, no. Oh. So I found out how many words you have to get, and I was like, okay, 55,000, that's going to be fun. And um, I told my mentor that I was going to make it into a novel, and she was like, you're going to write a novel in three months. And I was like, apparently. There you go. So. Will you try to e-publish? Um, yes. My friend was talking about her mom's friend was an author, and she started e-publishing, and then went into that, so I believe I'll try that. What else are you involved in at New Hanover? Um, I'm in the Beta Club and National Honor Society. Okay. Mm -hmm. So those activities keep you busy? Yes. <laughs> Very good. What do you think about graduation and project in general? I think, I mean, when you're doing it, it's a lot of work, and you're just like, can I be done with this? But I think overall it's a really good um, thing to have because you did the research, and most of the time it's something you want to do or something you, you're interested in. So. It, it actually forces you to have a better understanding of that. One of the things I like about it is that a lot of times something you, you think you wanted to do, you now know you yeah. don't. And and for those that don't know what they want to do, it helps kind of weed those things yeah, out. Yeah, definitely. So you still think there's value in it. Oh, yeah. I actually was um, a judge for someone whose project was on graduation project. Oh. Yeah, it was very interesting. <laughs> about whether it was valuable or not, mm -hmm. and she had both sides of the fence. It was really interesting. What did the conclusion? Uh, well, it depends on how you feel about it. For those who would never be um, exposed to that kind of thing, it was a good thing. Mm -hmm. But for others who do public speaking and maybe are in Boy Scouts working on an honor, you know, their um, Eagle Project or whatever, that maybe not so much. It was right. interesting. And was it worth the time? And how many, um, you know, everybody's having a run or this fundraiser or that fundraiser. Right. It, it, was, it was an interesting perspective. Interesting. Very good. Well, Colette, good luck. Thank Keep you. going. 55,000 words. Yep. <laughs> we look forward to hearing about your success. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back in a few minutes right after these messages. You told me to call? So can I stay for another hour or so? 11. Okay, Mom. Let your kids be who they are, but know what they're doing. I'm the best thing you ever had. All the things I'm guilty of. Giving you too much love. Making you, making you crazy, making you crash. Making me follow me. 
Give me a soft step. Sing the thing, complain her again. Don't you know? To you know her? This is me. There's a better way to have fun with history. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. I am joined by Cheryl Mays. She is the new director of the Cape Fear Museum of History and Science. Cheryl, you're brand new. I think you said like six to seven weeks here in Wilmington. Yes. What lured you to the Cape Fear Museum of History and Science? I visited the Cape Fear Museum of History and Science about 15 years ago oh, wow. on a vacation to Wilmington. First of all, I love Wilmington. There's lots of energy here, so that was an attraction in itself. Um, but I also really love the museum. Even 15 years ago, mm -hmm. it was interactive. I liked the subject matter. I thought they were doing really wonderful things connecting history and science and looking at culture, history, and science in the, in the region. Mm -hmm. So that attracted me, and when I saw the, the ad for the position, I thought, why not try and see if I can come down here and work with, I think, a very talented staff. So. Where did you come from? I came from Williamsburg, Virginia. I was so it's a little bit warmer here. It is a little bit warmer. Need to get into the Christmas spirit. Uh, and um, I'm still learning my way around, but it's a wonderful city. What vision do you have for the museum going forward? Well, as we are a county museum, mm -hmm. and we are looking to engage and educate all ages in the community so that we can reach as many residents of the county as possible. We also, uh, so the goal is to, our priority is families, students, teachers, and adults to okay. get them all in. Our priority is children and families. And I'm also really looking for getting people that don't normally come to the museum in the door, teens, I'd like the millennials, to see if we can engage them in interesting and new ways uh, with our science and history programs. Very good. Now I know one of the new exhibits is Make It Work. Tell us a little bit about that. It is. It's a, that is really an exciting one. In fact, when I was interviewing for the position, I read about this exhibit. It is really a wonderful marriage of history and science. So it is a simple machines exhibit, oh. maritime related to the shipbuilding industry here in Wilmington. And it is engaging for children as well as adults. It's hands-on, but it's also interspersed with artifacts related to the history of shipbuilding and the maritime uh, industry here, as well as large format pictures of people doing the same thing. So. Um, Families can go through. Mm -hmm. You have the six simple machines, incline plane, a wedge, a screw, and you, you use their so they can lower and raise a cannon, they can pull a cargo up an incline plane, and they can test out different ways to do it, going from uh, the hardest to the easiest, and learn a little bit about how simple machines made tasks easier. Oh, wow. So. Now, um, how about educational programs related to that exhibit? We, um, this exhibit came out of a, really a partnership between the education staff and the exhibits and curatorial staff, and we do a simple machines program for seventh graders. Uh, we do it offer for lots of grades, and I know fifth grade uh, classes come. So this will just be a wonderful addition to the Simple Machines program. They'll be able to use the exhibit when they come for that program. Very good. Mystery at the Museum. Tell oh, me yes. a little bit about okay. that. Okay, seventh annual Mystery of the, at okay. the Museum. Uh, it's going to be January 24th from 1 to 4. This is a wonderful program that that combines forensic scientists, science, science detective work, all uh, logic, reasoning. Oh, fun. So the premise this year is that there were animals used in a photo shoot, and they, some, they got loose, and they, were, <sighs> they got them back, but in the meantime, something was taken from the museum. So families and uh, children and adults come, and they use detective work and clues to figure out what, uh, what who took it. Was it an animal, or was it a, a human thief? And so the premise is that you go through the museum and you look for clues, you fingerprint, mm -hmm. you look at DNA evidence, and at the end you present your evidence to the uh, Ben David, the county district, district attorney. attorney, and he, you try to try to prove your who you think did it. So it's a really wonderful, and it's really fun, and it's very popular. And this will be the seventh year. Very good. And we uh, do that with sponsored by Tom Warner Cable. Um, that they give us uh, funds to help us with our STEM programs, science, technology, mm -hmm. engineering, and math. Very good. Um, 
Do you, the holiday break is coming up. Do you guys offer programs for school age children during the holiday break? We are this year. Okay. It's called Try It Week. Oh. And we start on Sunday after Christmas. Uh, Sunday is View It. We're going to be doing planetarium programs with our portable planetarium. We're going to do Mix It. We're going to do Explore It, which is history. Mix It is chemistry. Uh, and we're going to do Build It and Launch It. So every day is a different theme. Oh, fun. It's a drop-in, so you can come anytime between 10 and 3.30, and there'll be stations for families to go around and try, and educators there to help facilitate those. Okay, and is it totally family-driven? It's not just a drop-off the student kind of no, thing? No, it's totally family-driven. Okay. We want families, to, sure. everyone to come participate. Grandparents, parents, uncles, aunts, everyone in the family can participate. I think they'll all really enjoy it. Okay. Talk to us about the outdoor learning environment. So this is a, we have a parking lot mm -hmm. uh, on the side of the building that we are going to make into a park. Oh, fun. And we got money to, through the Parks Bond Initiative as well as raising money on our own. We're going, it's going to look at the, how people intersect with, how people, water, and land all intersect. In other words, how people influence what happens to the land and water and how water influences what happens to us in terms of weather mm -hmm. and uh, uh, what happens uh, in the community. So what we're doing now is we are working with the city and the county to get the site plan done. We're looking at, we're building interactives with a design company. And so it's going to be a park, but there's going to be some things about it. You'll go through, there'll be some kinetic sculpture, interactives, learn about weather, learn about how uh, dredging and how that affects mm -hmm. uh, the environment and the water and the forest. We will also have uh, plants, both native and non-native, so you can understand what you would find in this environment and what we've introduced that are very popular. And so it, there are lots of things, and it's multi-generational, so we're hoping from the very youngest can enjoy it as well as adults. Sounds like something for everyone. It is. We hope so. What's the time frame on that? We are hoping to open it this summer, summer, summer of Perfect. 2015. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, Cheryl, thank you for filling us in on all the great activities going on at the Cape Fear Museum. And I'll be back in a few minutes right after these messages. Turning a 20-foot wall into a canvas takes vision. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. I am joined by Elizabeth Pascarello and Gavin Campbell, both from New Hanover High School, and they are here today to talk about the honor serving, honest, honor service learning class. That was easy for me to say. Yeah. <laughs> Gavin, tell us what it is. Um, it's a class. Uh, Two days a week you're in the class, um, Mondays and Wednesdays or Tuesdays and Thursdays depending on when you're supposed to be volunteering. And you can volunteer one, two or three times a week. And sometimes uh, students get assigned to weekends. And um, uh, like for me, I volunteer twice a week for one hour each time. And um, it, really, it really differs. There's some people that volunteer once, um, once a week for like four hours at a time. And um, in the class part, um, we learn about uh, global issues, local issues, um, just c different things, uh, current affairs and stuff like that. Also, uh, the volunteer aspect of it, mm -hmm. that is uh, a sign based on when you apply for the class, you, you're asked like what fields you're interested in and then you get assigned a, a, a volunteer site accordingly. So generally it would be something that you want to do? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. Elizabeth, where are you serving? I'm serving at the Special Olympics program. Okay. And you'll do all your hours? Do you have to get a certain number? 40. 40. 40. Mm -hmm. And ideally you would go there twice a week? 
ideally? Yeah. Something like that. I think it depends. We're all different. So. So does that mean you don't have like a fourth period if, if you do weekend work or something? Right, you have mm -hmm. early release if you don't But have. two days a week you have to be in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what do you do as part of your service? Um, I am a Special Olympics soccer and basketball coach. So oh. um, each season they have different sports. And so for the fall I was a soccer coach and once a week I got to hang out with, um, I think our youngest player was eight and our oldest was 49. And so people with disabilities in the community mm -hmm. come out and we play soccer, and now we've moved on to basketball, and so oh, fun. doing that for two hours. Gavin, what are you doing? Um, I serve at two different sites. Uh, the Little Red Wagon program is one of them, and it's a it's a like a emergency food based program in Forest Hills. That, okay. Uh, there's like food pickups around the Forest Hills oh, neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, so they so parents will like leave the food out on the um, on their like porch. The porch. Yeah, on their porch, and then like the designated days, it'll be like a neighborhood pickup. There's street leaders that do that. And they all bring the food in, and then we have a big collection of food in um, the Forest Hills like gym area. And we bag the food for um, weekends when kids won't have like food given to them at school. And that's just one of the programs. And the other program I uh, go to is Nourish NC, and it's a uh, over it's overseas uh, mm -hmm. little red wagon, and it's just a big uh, food distribution center with a uh, it's like a food bank and has like a huge warehouse. So when I work there, I like sort food and I count food and. Um, Pretty much keep like the big like database of food like that we have uh, available. Okay, Elizabeth, let's jump back to you. Why do you think it's important to do this? I think it's important to serve because, especially at my site, I know uh, you get a totally different perspective. I mean, growing up in uh, the same kind of neighborhood public schools, you know, you see the same kind of kids and you see the same kind of people that are similar to you and. Getting to work at the Special Olympics program, I've gotten to see a whole different side of things, and it's definitely changed my ideas for what I want to do with my future and how I want to meet new people and see things a different way. Okay. Gavin, what about maybe some lessons that you've learned in your service so far? Uh, I've like learned how to, I've definitely learned some organizational skills, considering like, like they'll uh, have a bunch of stuff and then they'll be like, organize it in, like, in a warehouse. <laughs> so I guess. Uh, at first, it used to like take me a long time, and now it's just sort of like they'll have a ton of boxes and be like, put them all on that shelf, and then you like condense and consolidate, and it's just I don't know. Orga organize organizing is like pretty much like a big aspect of nourish. Good, um, Elizabeth. Tell me if you think how this service applies maybe to a career you might want to do. Um, well, I've always wanted to be a teacher, and then when I got involved in Special Olympics, I thought a little about maybe being a special needs teacher in um, schools, but it's a lot bigger, uh, it's a bigger commitment than I thought it would be uh, working with kids, and I only see them like one or two hours a week, so it's definitely something I've had to consider, but. Do you think you still want to be a teacher? I don't know, the whole North Carolina schools thing, I've talked to so many teachers that hate teaching, and so that's kind <laughs> there of. There are other states besides North Carolina, yeah. <laughs> not that I probably should say that, but. Yeah, that's, so um, it, it all depends on where I want to live, okay. but. sure. You got to yeah. go to college. And, yeah, I got a little time to think about it. Gavin, what about you? Uh, what do I want to be? Well, do you think this uh, plays any part in your future? Um, Have you done this and been like, oh, you know, I never thought about that. You know, I might like to pursue this. I mean, personally, like, I want to be a doctor, but uh, this definitely, like, falls into the, the idea of healthcare and stuff. Um, like, one of the projects we did in the class was had to relate to our site, and I studied the effects of, like, hunger in children in school, and, like, uh, like all these different types of factors go into like child's learning ability, mm -hmm. like neuroplasticity and um, memory retention, all this stuff just like completely plummets if a student goes to school hungry. So it's aspects like that that like have sparked interest in me and stuff. But um, other than that, this hasn't really changed my idea of what I want to pursue. Good, just some heightened awareness. Yeah, just some okay. awareness. Do you, Elizabeth, think that all the high schools should be doing this? Now, right now, only New Hanover's doing it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Do you think it should reach out to the other high schools? I think it's um, an awesome program, and um, we, I think it's definitely changed my, um, you know, the way I see things, but um, I think all high school students would benefit from this. Um, and the cool thing at Hanover, it's only offered to juniors and seniors, so if you're an underclassman, I think it'd definitely be something to look forward to and almost see as a privilege to serve people. Do you all know if you can do it junior and senior year? Like yeah. two, you, know, you can? I'm mm -hmm. about to take it the second semester. Okay. Can you do, you can, oh, so two semesters in the mm -hmm. same year mm -hmm. even? Just mm -hmm. has to be a different project or it can, it can be, be a the continuation? Same one. It, the, they like revise the, um, like the in-class learning aspect mm -hmm. every time. Like they're like still making improvements considering like it's just the first time. So the revision takes place and then it's different material you're going to learn. So. 
I mean, it's all um, changing. Like Did either one of you go to class yesterday? Yeah, we what, was some of the, what was some of the classroom topics that you covered yesterday? yesterday. Can you recall? <laughs> uh, well, uh, we take six classes a day, so okay. let me think. Um, <laughs> well, I was just interested. You said like current affairs. We, you we talk about what's going we, on in the world. We talked about, um, we talked about uh, like slums in India. And oh, okay. We were talking about um, sort of like uh, global citizenship, and like we've been talking about that for a couple of weeks. So. We talked Excellent. a lot about like how to serve from like the inside out and working with people and like having like giving them the opportunities to improve on their own and not necessarily like, going in and making the changes but like allowing people to make changes on their own. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks guys for stopping by. No problem. I'll be back in a few minutes right after these messages. Hi, I'm Sheila E. Music is vital to a quality education for every child in America. Children who study music do better in school and in their lives. Music in school keeps children in school. It gives you confidence, uh, it's inspiring, and it just makes you feel good. Please get involved in your community and help make sure that music is part of every child's education. To learn how you can help, please visit www.supportmusic.com. Want your kids to eat good food? Send them to the school cafeteria. They'll find fresh fruit, vegetables, and whole grains. Research shows that school lunches are healthier and cost less than most lunches brought from home. School meals are served in age-appropriate portion sizes and meet federal nutrition standards as well. Sure, we still serve pizza with low-fat cheese, whole wheat crust, and salad. Want your kids to eat good food? Send them to their school cafeteria. A message from the Child Nutrition Foundation. We hope you've enjoyed our program today. To discover the exciting details between New Hanover High's new Honor Service Learning class, visit their website at www.nhcs.net slash nhhs. And finally, for more information on the Cape Fear Museum, visit their website at www.capefearmuseum.com or call them at 798-4370. Now, if you ever have any questions about the topics discussed here on our show today, please call the School Systems Public Relations Office at 254-4180 or check out the School Systems website at www.nhcs.net. I'm Sheila Evans. On behalf of the entire crews here at NHCS-TV, thanks for joining us today on this edition of the Forum.